We are in the place we are in with the coup cabal, the coup, and the abuses targeting President Trump, largely because of one person, Hillary Clinton. Hillary Clinton's campaign paid for this uh, smear operation against Trump using Russia intel through Fusion GPS and that dossier that was created by Christopher Steele using again Russia intel was uh, laundered through the FBI and DOJ to generate spying operations on Trump, all sorts of other illicit activities targeting him, ultimately led to the special counsel. So no dossier, no, no Hillary Clinton payment, no dossier, no special counsel, no coup cabal, no threats of impeachment, no continued outrageous harassment from Congress, which continues this week. Hope Hicks was harassed this week. The judiciary called her in and asked her questions they know they don't have the right to answers to. You know, there, I, you know, I know, just because the Trump administration objects to giving information, it doesn't mean they're always right. But in this case, it's pretty clear. The president's close advisors, uh, the president has executive privilege there, and Congress can't burst through it. Yet they hauled Hope Hicks in and asked her a question after question that they knew was covered by privilege. And as I pointed out last week, uh, Don, um, the president's son, Donald Trump Jr., was hauled in before the Intelligence Committee, uh, Committee of the Senate, which is nominally controlled by uh, Republicans, but is practically controlled by Democrats. So he's hauled in to answer questions raised by who? Michael Cohen, the admitted liar who's now in jail. It's abuse after abuse, and it all began with the Clinton campaign operation trying to create a false narrative during the campaign and after the camp after the campaign ended that the Russians were uh, conspiring with Donald Trump. It was a hoax, it was a smear, it's defamation. So why do I say all that? Because I want you to remember that the next time you hear, well, why are you talking about Hillary Clinton? She's no longer in office. Hillary Clinton is, might as well be Speaker of the House, practically speaking, because all the investigations are a result of her campaign operation pushing the Russia hoax. And her friends in the Democratic Party are following up with this impeachment, not impeachment, harassment of the House, by the House of the Trump team. So yes, it's important that she be held accountable. And of course, Judicial Watch exposed the Clinton email scandal. We found the emails. And one of the key cases that resulted in the disclosure of these emails was the Judicial Watch Freedom of Information Act request and lawsuit about Benghazi. And I just want to remind you of the, those circumstances. We had found the smoking gun in a separate lawsuit about, uh, remember they lied, uh, Susan Rice lied repeatedly, this is before she was unmasking people improperly it looks like, she lied repeatedly as UN ambassador for Obama on five talk shows about the Benghazi attack, falsely attributing it to a video when it was a terrorist attack. That was designed to take political heat over the president who didn't want the embarrassment of an Al-Qaeda attack or terrorist attack that resulted in the death of an ambassador a few months before the election. I don't know about you, I consider it a big deal when the president and all of his men and women lie about a terrorist attack that results in four Americans dying. So we were committed to figuring out what went on there and trying to get accountability. And sure enough, we received documents from the uh, administration after suing that Congress couldn't get, the media didn't really want to get, that showed it was the White House who was pushing out this big lie about the video made them do it. Not the intelligence community, it was out of the White House. And as a result of that, the select committee was formed by John Boehner, the then speaker. Trey Gowdy had the select committee. But we noticed in that lawsuit there were no Clinton emails. So we asked again. 
sent another request and we sued, of course, but they didn't give us an answer. And they still didn't give us any Clinton emails. So our lawyer in the case, Ramona Kotka, said, tell us what's going on. Where did you look? And that forced them to confess up to the court initially. We gave Judicial Watch everything except some other documents. And then it's leaked a few weeks later, oh wait, to the New York Times, that there were Clinton emails out there. There was this server out there. So we forced that disclosure. And the judge in that case, Royce Lambert, wants answers because they were trying to get us to shut the case down without telling us there were Clinton emails. So late last year, he authorized discovery into were they trying to uh, mislead the court? Was Hillary Clinton trying to avoid FOIA? And where are her other emails? Are there other emails to be found and searched as the law requires? And he also wants to know if Benghazi's tied to this effort to cover up the emails. Were they nervous about that? And he granted us discovery. We just finished up the depositions of almost 12 witnesses. I think it's 12. Our team of lawyers, Ramona Coca leading the team at this time, has been taking deposition after deposition of top State Department officials, former Clinton aides, people close to Hillary Clinton, including her lawyer. As the Justice Department opposes us at every step, and the State Department. I mean, I think highly of Attorney General Barr, but the Justice Department involved in this, they, they, they're trying to curtail our discovery. They were trying to stop us at every step, and they still are. 